The first is mujahadatun nafs, that of struggling against the self. The idea that there's an internal conflict going on, so that you actually have to struggle with yourself. And part of struggling with yourself is struggling with the passions. And the passions again are what? Your bestial nature. And so what you struggle that with is with your reason. And that is why when somebody is attempting not to do something that is wrong and struggle against those impulses, what he's using is a higher power. And the higher power is reason, is the aqal. And that's why the essence of intellect in Arabic means that which constrains you or which prevents you from doing something that will lead you astray. Aqala ya'qilu means to, to stop, to prevent. And the other Arabic word they use for uh, intellect is nuha, which comes from that which refuses or that which prevents, again, yanha. All right. So the intellect, the essence of the intellect is that it prevents a human being from going astray. Now those people that don't listen to the intellect, uh, Allah says about them, in whom kill an'am, they're like animals. But then He says, Badhum Adal, they're even more astray. And the reason for that is because animals do not do things that harm them. If an animal knows there's harm in something, it will avoid it. If an animal sees fire, it will flee from the fire. If an animal sees something that threatens it, it will either defend itself if it doesn't see any other venue, or if it by its nature uh, the threat is something that it deems within its power, like a lion, if it's threatened by a lesser animal, aggressive animal, the lion will tend to fight because it's a lion and it knows that it can overpower. So the idea of human beings resorting to the bestial element in the self is a capitulation. It's the idea of surrendering the self to something that is low. And that is why if you look at the human body itself, the higher organs the heart and the intellect are on the upper body and the lower organs, the stomach and the genitals are on the lower body. And so the idea is that this is the way the human being should be. He should be, the ruling force in the human being should be his heart and his intellect and the subjugated force should be the bestial nature. What happens with human beings is that they become overcome by their bestial nature. And so hunger and craving, which is the essence of desire, overwhelms the intellect and so they begin to want things that are harmful for them and this is why they're worse than animals because an animal will only take what it needs lions do not go out and slaughter they take what they need and they leave the rest maybe for another day but if they're not hungry they're not going to kill 10 zebras they will kill what they need to kill. And that's the difference between a human. The predations of humans are not needs. So when an animal, a predator animal, attacks another animal, it attacks out of need, not out of want or desire. And so this is very different. And there's only a few animals that appear to be unprovoked. Sharks will attack unprovoked and, and so will certain snakes. There's a few snakes and there's a, a baboon that will attack unprovoked. But it's very rare in the animal kingdom for an animal to attack unprovoked. So the idea now, all of sentient creatures, creatures that have emotion and certainly intellect, human beings, have a self-defense mechanism. It is part of human nature to defend yourself. If you fall, your reaction is to put your arm out. You don't fall on your face. Human beings will not do that. In fact, one of the first things they teach you in martial arts is to fall properly because you tend to want to put your hand out and break your wrist. So they teach you to learn how to fall in a way that's actually not going to harm you. But the impulse is to brace yourself, is to defend yourself. The same with if somebody begins to attack you, the thing to do is to cover your face, to protect your face. If somebody throws a blow at you, if you just stand there and don't defend yourself, something is wrong with your nervous system. It's not functioning. So self-defense is a human, it's actually ingrained in us to defend ourselves. And that is why every civil law on the planet recognizes the right to self-defense. There is no law that does not whether it's Muslim or non-Muslim, every law recognizes that a human being has a right to defend himself from bodily harm, from harm of property, all of these things. The first jihad is that struggle against the self. And this is what makes a human being human. 
Raghbir Bahani says that a human being, there's two words in the Quran used for human. One is bashar and the other is insan. A bashar, it is that quality that distinguishes us from other animals. So for instance, birds are distinguished by their feathers. Birds have feathers. Mammals have fur. If you look at mammals, they, they have fur. Human beings have skin. And that's why we're called bashar. Bashar is from bashara, which means skin. So the human is, when you say he's a bashar, you're just saying he's a man. That's why when the prophets, what do they say about the prophets? They don't say, uh, ma anta illa insanun mithuluna. They say, ma anta illa basharun mithuluna. You're just a human like us. But they're not saying insan, they're saying bashar. All of us share basharia. But we don't all share insania in truth just as an act of generosity from God that he calls us insan. What Rahab says, if you can imagine a dog standing on its two legs as opposed to four and talking in language, then you can imagine the state that many human beings are in. That they only share their humanity in the form, not in reality. And there's a verse in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. We have ennobled the children of Adam, and that ennoblement is that we've been placed in this incredibly noble form. We're not like animals. We don't walk on all fours. We don't have to go down to a plate. We take things up to our mouth. I don't have to go down and lick, uh, lap up my water like a dog, that I actually have this ability uh, to feed myself. And all of these qualities that the human beings has been given. So acquiring virtuous qualities or noble qualities is actually a very difficult thing. It takes time. It's not something that human beings are born with. Compassion is something that needs to be nurtured. Now some people you will find have this naturally. And it's something Imam Al-Ghazali mentions and other great scholars, that there are some people that have virtuous qualities by nature. There are other people that do not. That you will see in children, some children want to share things, other children actually refuse completely to share things and will become very belligerent if they're made to share things. And those, they have to learn. There are children that beat other children. There are other children that couldn't do that and would feel terrible about that. Now these qualities tend to be more the aggressive qualities in human beings are much more marked in men than they are in women. And there's a reason for that as well. There's a reason why that they're even in their form they are less bestial than men. That women have certain qualities that are related to their biology and it has to do with the fact that they produce children. And so there are certain qualities that are inherent just because they have the hormones. I mean, some of it is purely chemical and other of it has to do with just the fact that there's a womb, rahim, and the essence of the womb is mercy because that's what the word in Arabic, rahim, is rahma, are the same uh, root word, the womb and mercy, because the essence of mercy is in the womb. And that's why Allah has derived the womb, shaqaqtu ar-raham min ismi ar-rahman. He actually derived the womb from his name, the merciful. So the womb is derived from an attribute of God. And this is what women have that men don't have. And that is why the humanizing factor in society is women. The mother is the humanizing factor. And, and without that, if the mother is destroyed, then it's a disaster for the rest of the society. So this idea of acquiring virtue to become a human being, to achieve one's insania, to achieve one's humanness is very difficult. And that is a struggle. It is a struggle.